Hello and welcome to the long overdue second episode of the Apogee podcast. Thank you all so much for your support and let's get right into it. The the big topic right now is the Starship presentation next Thursday. Space World has been a little slow so it's finally something big with a firm-ish date on the horizon and it's been on the horizon for a while, over two years since the last official update a lifetime in Starship terms, that's right after the janky SN1 Pathfinder was built, was the last time we had an official update like this. Boca Chica and Starship have obviously changed a lot since then, so there's a ton of potential material SpaceX could decide to cover. I just wanted to do a little rundown of what we may be hearing on Thursday, And after that, I'll ramble a bit about which ones I think are most likely and which ones I want the most. So, starting from the top, there's a new Starship design. We know the official Starship design has changed, but we haven't seen any official images of this design. The last official images were um, a Dear Moon update on the Dear Moon website had some official SpaceX images. That's where we saw a new, more triangular window. But things have changed a lot. Um, We know the ship's going to have nine engines instead of six. So that's going to be three sea levels and six vacuum raptors. And to take advantage of that additional thrust, the tanks are going to be stretched to hold more fuel. So the ship's going to be a little longer. Both the methane and oxygen header tanks are now in the nose of the vehicle. Before, that was just the oxygen header tank. Now, it's possible that the fairing has also been stretched by a ring or two to make up for this slight loss of payload volume and, again, take advantage of the higher payload capacity, but the fairing stretch is just speculation. Now, last we've heard, the forward flaps are going to be slightly smaller, higher up on the vehicle, closer to the point of the nose, and pushed back to the leeward side of the vehicle, that's the shiny side away from the heat shield. Um, You may have seen some weird fan renders of this, we don't know what it's officially going to look like. Um, That covers all the latest design changes that we've heard about on Twitter mostly, but that's not all the design details that we have long been eager to see. Details like how exactly the payload doors are going to open and close, and of course, interior design details for the various kinds of human spaceflight Starship will hopefully eventually take. Obviously, the ship's going to look pretty different with all these design changes I mentioned, and it's going to be a bit confusing during the presentation if they decide to show this, because the current full-stack Starship will rightly be a big focus of the talk, and it's going to look slightly different from any new animation or image shown. Hopefully that doesn't dissuade them from showing us the new design though, because I'm really looking forward to that. The next category of information would be numbers. It's been a very long time since we have seen actual numbers in a Starship presentation, and I know the space community is dying for them. Starship, dry mass and wet mass, super heavy dry mass and wet mass, official payload numbers to low Earth orbit, geostationary, moon and Mars. And of course, um, a whole segment of engine information. What are the current Raptor numbers? What are the Raptor 2 target numbers? And on the topic of engines, we don't know much about Raptor 2 in general, so maybe they could spend some time showing us what's the deal with that upgrade. There is also an engine that Elon hinted about beyond Raptor 2 that is so different it's not even a Raptor, apparently. No clue what that is, and I highly doubt we're going to dive into that, but it's something that's out there. The next topic that we could possibly hear about is refueling. This is one of the most important features of Starship, and perhaps one of the more challenging ones. As far as we know, the principles are sound, but it's still something that's never been demonstrated at this scale. Uh, We also know SpaceX has a pretty coherent plan for this, because in their HLS bid, SpaceX apparently spent 93 pages detailing their plans for refueling procedures to NASA. So this is definitely something they've thought about a lot. We know Starships are no longer going to dock butt-to-butt for this operation, but that's about it. 
It'd be good to see some more details here because there's a lot they could go into. We've heard rumors that there will be a dedicated depot variant of Starship. It'd be cool to see that design and to see any design for the fuel tanker variant of Starship. Now, there's also specifics about how long a refueling mission would take, how many refuelings for certain missions, HLS comes to mind, and really technical things like boil-off rates and so on. And that gets us into the fine details category. One detail I think we will hear a ton about is the catch tower. Elon seems particularly excited by this, and it's going to be right behind him as he's talking, so I'm sure we're going to hear a lot about it. I just hope we actually get some more information about it, not just how cool it is, because it is cool, but I want to know the details. Some more questions we have are, are they going to build starships in Florida, or are they going to keep building them in Texas and ship them there? Are they going to build them in both places? How are the ocean platforms progressing? Is there any design for that? What will the operations look like? Um, how will the Starship vehicle be inspected and refurbished after flights? That's something I'd really like for them to go into. I doubt they will. Um, how will a new payload be integrated quickly to allow rapid reuse? This is a topic that is pretty important. I don't think we've had any mention of this, but payloads are why rockets exist and you can only fly the same starship upper stage as fast as you can integrate a new payload onto it and of course those payloads are expensive and delicate often maybe starship will change that paradigm but that'll take a little while and the final category we have here is timeline when are they targeting an orbital launch are they currently ready for the flight and just waiting approval if not, what steps remain to be done from their side? What cadence of orbital attempts do they plan to hit? When will the first orbital refueling test be conducted? What Mars window are they aiming for? When do they plan to start launching from Florida? And so on. You can see a, a pretty big timeline, testing timeline, that they could construct and show in a, a PowerPoint slide here. And that's about it for the Starship, but you can pretty much double this entire list of information and then some if we were to start asking questions about the HLS Starship variant. Uh, we may hear a little about HLS Starship, but I think that information is going to be given in a separate SpaceX and NASA joint press conference sometime later this year. All right, so that's the rundown of things we could be seeing Thursday. Of course, that's assuming I didn't forget anything, which is likely, and also that there isn't stuff SpaceX has been working in the background that we haven't heard about at all, which is very likely. The things I think we're most likely to see is information on that catch tower, a new launch animation showing the new design, possibly showing new refueling alignment, fairing opening, and the catch tower. I wouldn't be surprised to hear stuff about Raptor and Raptor 2 progress, maybe uh, some firing videos there, and maybe just maybe a payload to Leo is mentioned, even if it's just in passing. It's been a while since we've heard anything else than more than 100 tons, but based on current numbers, it seems like Starship will be getting 150 or more tons to orbit per launch. And hopefully I'm being pessimistic, but I think there's a decent chance that that's all we get. Most of the recent presentations have been recaps of info we already knew with less of a script and slides. I hope this presentation is more in line with early IAC presentations of the ITS and BFR systems from 2016 and 2017. I think people have really forgotten the level of detail we used to get from an Elon presentation. Cutaway diagrams, timelines with dates, PowerPoint slides full of array of numbers, fresh animations, and more. My wish list for topics discussed, well, besides literally everything I've talked about, my top topics would be refueling details, interior design, dry and wet mass numbers, and that testing timeline. So that wraps it up. Thanks so much for listening. After the SpaceX presentation wraps up, I'll be going live on the Discord, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of exciting stuff to talk about. 
and I'll also try to put together a video with my thoughts on the update, assuming there's enough new material shortly after. Talk to you next time.